we have gone down so far in the estimation of everybody. Where do you live? You say Rochdale, what part? Ashville Valley, they all know about it. We've got bumps, people snipping glue, people breaking into flats. It stinks. It's awful. It's terrible to live with it, day in, day out. It's like, like you've just been left to rot. When Nashville Valley was built, uh, we believed that, uh, that it would make a major contribution towards solving the housing crisis in Rochdale, and to be fair, for some years it did. This is the story of a planning dream which became a nightmare, and of the people on Rochdale's Ashfield Valley who bore the consequences of a revolution in British housing. Last summer, the bulldozers were sent in to destroy all but three of the 26 alphabetically named blocks. Back in 1967, when hopes were high that this was the New Jerusalem, there were few critics of the scheme. But those few included the makers of this satirical film, shot on the estate. We take you now to witness the opening of the new flat. And our camera team is on hand to record for posterity this moving ceremony. We who represent you on the council are proud of our achievements. We have spurred neither sweat, toil, or tears. We have built you homes that you can be proud to live in. Moving on to Ashfield Valley was a godsend two or 15 years ago, nearly 16 years ago now, because it had everything that we hadn't got in the house we lived in, which was hot running water, bathroom, a flushing toilet in the house, and enough bedrooms for us all to sleep in, because there were four children, I mean, mum and dad. And it was very hard at first, but when we moved in here, it was brilliant. Nothing but the best has gone into the construction of these delightful, <laughs> luxurious dream homes. That's one of the lifts over there, what we used to do. You can see it all like, it's just a, a mess now. But we used to do it uh, a regular maintenance. But it, every time we've come, it's nearly always vandalism, wasn't it? Yeah, without fail. You can bet your life whoever designed them didn't live on them. That's the best thing they could have done to it, hardcore. From up here, you can see the demolition of Zenna, Yardley, Wentworth, Valleyfield and Exford. That was the first phase of the demolition. This is the second phase. When I first came onto the valley, the valley was quite densely populated with a mixture of all kinds of people. There was a, a lot of families living on the valley, a lot of uh, children living on the valley. We formed gangs and we did get in trouble. We had to keep out of trouble and the place to keep out of trouble was up on the roof. Uh, 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 I was about ten when I first moved on with my mum and um, I was a bit wary at first, you know, new place, strange people. After a couple of weeks, when you start getting to know everybody, it was great. You couldn't do nothing without everybody finding out, you know, everybody knew everybody else's business and if anything happened, everybody got together to sort it out. We're like our little own community. All right, I think it's great. There's been some great people on there. there I know some famous, famous people who we say within the past few weeks has left good people. You meet on the street, did you? Good evening, good morning, what have you? And uh, no, there's been some great people on there, which have gone, but there's still good people on there. Well, there's nothing wrong with Ashfield Valley, is there? There isn't, though. Not that thing. 
And this was going to be a glorious scheme when it started, you know. I remember walking along the river banks here with Dick Crossman, who was then the Minister of Housing, and the dream he painted about what could be done to the river of Ashfield Valley and how we could have sort of boats sailing up and down it and river walks and so on and so forth. None of it materialised because the great problem was that we had the finance to build a dwelling, but we didn't give the finance to go with the environment that was necessary when those buildings were created. When the architects designed Astral Valley, I think they had in mind the people who would live here would be people with jobs, middle class, quite well off. And, uh, but because the land it was built on was, used to be a marsh, the buildings started to sink. They were built too fast out of cheap materials. This is a typical flat. Inside, they're quite drab, box-like, really. There's, there's, there's nothing really you can do with these, like, to make them individual. And uh, subsequently, because when the flats started to uh, like fall apart and sink into the marsh, people didn't want to live here. And then it became a dumping ground for people, like on low tenancy points. And anyone could get a flat in the valley at one time. You needed no points at all. I've been Member of Parliament for 18 years. I mean, I, I cannot count them, begin to think of the number of people that have been to my surgery about housing. And you say to them, are you willing to go anywhere? And always, they said, without exception, I'd rather be homeless than go and live on Ashfield Valley. And that was a great tragedy. You could not want, at one time get credit on Ashfield Valley. You could not get a job if you lived on Ashfield Valley. I'm not saying that people set out that, that that's how they went it. They wanted it to work. But if you mentioned that you lived on Ashfield Valley, then your chances of a job were virtually nil. Ashfield Valley didn't just lack jobs. Apart from a laundrette which lasted just 18 months, the only other amenity for a thousand tenants on this side of the estate was one general store. I think you have to go now because it's getting too much now. You can't, you can't afford to stop at the two o'clock in the morning when someone's playing music next door to you. And I told you all those dogs are barking out all that night long. Then you get all somebody coming in trying to break the phones by throwing bricks and concrete at them. I mean, you just don't want this. I've done my term on here. At one time, they just say, if you've done 10 years on here, you could go. It's like a prison sentence. Then you could go if you'd done your term on here. <laughs> I've done more than my term. It's terrible. It is. Uh, drug addicts taking drugs, collapsing on, on, on the tarmac. People being found dead um, in shoots and uh, bins. People being uh, found hung because of depression or uh, out of work. Hardcore Valley, I, that's what's left. They've still got faith in like um, what's left, but what you sell at first was like a mass of people, colourful from all walks of life, who sort of um, live with each other. You sell like um, the bottom end used for like all the punks and hippies and freaks sort of thing. And this end is got the families and pensioners. But now you've got like everybody living in one one bunch. They get on still, but you know what I mean. It's not as widespread. We used to like um, you used to get your own area sorted out and you stay with it. The hard core of tenants on Ashfield Valley has been supplemented in the last two years by outsiders, punks from Britain and Northern Ireland, who've been attracted by the increasing number of empty flats to squat in, and by the estate's easy tolerance. Once they come to Asher Valley, then the people who live here, who are so-called normals and straights, are, are used to seeing us walking about and stuff. And so it's no big deal. Like. We all agree on the, the basic principles that the government is wrong in too many aspects. And uh, we can offer a viable alternative, which is our own lifestyle. It's, uh, we can live to a certain level. Like, uh, just above existence, just above the breadline, if we cooperate with each other, yeah? Like, say, say I'm stuck for money one week, and my friend gets his gyro, he, I think he would be only too happy to lend me money if he could afford it, yeah? Or vice versa. They're absolutely filthy, they're dirty, their hair's all matted together, and the clothes are filthy, and they just need a damn good wash. But then some of the lads are very nice, they're very educated lads. Half of them, when you talk to them, as I say, how they let themselves go into getting to the state that they've got into, it's beyond me. Beyond anybody, I should think. 
when I first saw my first punk, it, it, it worried me, it frightened me. But uh, we started talking one day, and he was a great fella, you know. And, and all the, the, the others are just the same. They're just, they're just ordinary people that are just dressed different. I'm a bit louder, that's all. Like, why, why can't I wear these clothes, you know? Like, uh, if, if, if anyone wants to complain to me, like, in person, then I'll talk to them about it, you know? But, like, I don't go around saying, hey, you, you know, like, you're trendy, like, you know, oh. You know, like, take, that, take them clothes off your scruff, or, or you, you tidy person. Really, I think to get on the society, you need to have a, a nice side party, a nice tie, a nice shirt, a nice piece of paper saying that you can drive, a nice piece of paper saying that you've got a clean rent card, and a piece of paper saying that you've got an, an O level or an A level, or that a piece of paper saying that you're not what you are. I don't know if you can understand that. Uh, I, for me to get on in, in society as it stands now, I would have to be something I, I cannot be. Like us people around here, when we were sort of like leaving school, we all went looking for work. Most of us went on the way to yes. And then some of us got job, jobs out of it, and some of us never. I worked like for near two years on a, a sheet metal worker, but I was making things and I was getting paid 149 an hour. And it maybe took me 13 hours to make that, so calculate that yourself. I get a small profit. Went into the office to get a new job to make and heard him on the phone saying, Well, that'll be £3,000, sir. And I was going, I made that. And I'm getting £30 and he's paying £3,000 for it. There's something wrong here. I don't want to be a robot. I don't want to wake up at eight and go off to work and then realise 20 years later, a midlife crisis, thinking, Wow, what the fuck have I been doing? You know, like, why, I, why haven't I been enjoying myself? I don't want to do that. I want to do it now. I, I want to sort me out now. In Ireland, you can't get a house and you can't get a flat unless you're married. So you're trapped with your parents, you know, until you get married. So it is like slave to convention. Get married, get a house, get a mortgage, get a job, get a kid, get dragged down, go out and get pissed at the weekend and beat your wife. That's, that's just the way it ends up. It's the way fucking so many people end up. They're in their houses and they think they're living a nice life, but they're not. They don't know what life is. Build a campfire and cook a stew, have a few beers and have a laugh. In pursuit of the alternative life, many of the Valley's punks travel the summer circuit of three festivals. Last August, they set off for the Ribblehead Festival in Cumbria. Is that a drum? Yeah, that's where the drums are coming oh, from. Oh, yeah. drums, he's got. Huh? Oh, yeah. I told him and told him. I said I was shivering. Oh, I was you must see them. Let us pull some set of drums in and block a flat. I said we're all drumming. You know. Yeah. Anyway, he has calmed it down a little. Yeah. He's not oh. going all out his own. But he starts late on it. Now it's. Yeah, I didn't yeah. go on it. I did In a word, no. Their own style, I see. Provide they respect their neighbours. Yes. Oh, yeah. You know, if I come on, we say, well, if I'm gargled up, I keep quiet. People want to sleep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and then again, half of them don't work, not because it's their fault. So they stop up late early yeah, hours yeah. in the morning, yeah. don't they? Oh.
I'll eat breakfast. Uh, just gonna eat a little bit for more. I enjoyed myself when I was a kid on here, but I don't, it's not what I want for mine. I'd rather be away now, somewhere, a bit more cleaner. Um, where I can feel safe when they're playing out, like in a garden. You know, um, oh, when I can feel safe walking down the street, you know, I'm not looking up to see if anybody's going to throw anything over the landing. Down the last festival that we went to, it was a real pain in the ass because we went to Castle Rig and it took us longer than it did to get here. And it was awake all the time because it was his first festival that he'd been on, so he'd never been in the van before with that many people. But t uh, yesterday, <laughs> when we came down, he was getting into it more. <laughs> what it is with the festival, it's like um, the nearest thing we can get to, an holiday sort of thing. Getting away from the concrete, getting back to the land, which we all learn to respect more and more as the, the rape continues, if anyway, you know what I mean? We're learning to uh, find our own roots of the land. about in the world who'll deceive you into believing otherwise. <laughs> Back on the valley, one of the estate's social workers was packing up. The decision to leave was almost taken out of her hands by the arrival of the demolition men outside her office. Well, I got here this morning and I saw the crane <laughs> outside with, with the light, the bulldozer thing. And I thought, oh, they're going to actually knock our bit down and have not told me. And then I came in as well, the window smashed in the front and it's just really sad. It, it's like, like you've just been left to rot. We are hoping to move as soon as possible. Uh, we're just waiting for the council to send us this letter telling us when we can move out, but we cannot move out until that day that they say, say so. Uh, we can't move out before and we can't move out after. It has to be on that day. Last August, in cheerful defiance of the demolition and the law, Ashfield Valley staged its first and last concert. It was eventually stopped by the police. No one was arrested. Was uh, the local band, and uh, they kind of like provide a service in a way because it's, it's, we're living on the valley and being unemployed, everything you can tend to get yourself in a bit of a rut, and it just like elevates you out of the rut. You might not like the music that we're dancing to, but all I think all they're concerned about is that people are happy. Yeah, 
It's just dead now. It's just really quiet. And if you walk around all day, I'm not seeing anybody. I'm going to say something. No. Well, I've been told it could be two, two and a half years before I get moved because I think they're having problems rehousing everybody. I don't actually think they've got the money yet to knock these down, so it could, could be a long time. The rest of the, the valley was all right. Everybody was very happy. And it just started to go down there. And they started to put in all kinds of people on it. Everything's in wrong, guys. We don't have customers here anymore. Just shoplifters. I'm glad to be going, but it's still a long time to have been on and not move on. I've had a son married from here. I've become a grandma here. I lost husband here. Good memory, bad memory. But there you are. It's life. That's it, isn't it? But time's got to come to its end, hasn't it? It's been six months now since the last filming and uh, I've been living with my girlfriend since then and uh, I've, I've overcome li leaving it. What does bother me though is the ease and the disregard they show the decision makers in making decisions like demolishing people's homes. It seems to me like a, a progress in, in this world of rapidly expanding societies that the only way to rapidly expand the society is by rapidly demolishing one. And it still feel like your home here. Well, if it was here, I suppose it would feel like my home, yeah. But it doesn't feel much like a home now. 